Hey, good people. Welcome back to Beauty and the Frizz. My name is Kara. Whether you're new or returning, thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me for another BYOP video. I'm really excited about this because this video goes with my whole theme because y'all know everything in my collection is on the chopping block. I don't care if you're a brand I love. I don't care if you're a brand that I felt like I was a collector of. I don't care. And you know what singles you can get it to. So today, this BYOP video is all about eyeshadow singles that are on the chopping block. The only catch is I have to do a look with 10 of these shades. <laughs> all right, if y'all wanna go ahead and see the shades, why they're on the chopping block, and then two looks. Keep watching this video, let me know what you think. And if makeup is your therapy and your love, if it makes you happy and you wanna hang out with someone that feels the same way, definitely consider joining the community. I'd love to have you back. All right, let's get started. I do hope that everybody is doing well. Here it is dreary and rainy, but I am feeling really good. I feel on the cusp because I'm gonna get this collection down. I'm realizing the unhealthy relationship that I developed with makeup in such a small period of time, y'all. Like a small period of time. And it is really making me reflect on everything. And that could be a whole nother video because that's not what this is about. It's not what you came for. The BYOP series was started by my friend Kelly over at Keep Beauty Real along with myself in an effort to use our beautiful, beautiful eyeshadow singles because they deserve to be more than swatched. However, you can acquire singles like Penny sometimes, y'all, especially when there's a sale. And in acquiring these singles, there have been some shades where I'm kind of like, mm, don't really think about using these, you know? And we're gonna talk about them. Now, before we get into that, I also wanted to share that my good, good friend Kendra Morgan Official is also a part of this collab as well as Lock Maiden. So all of the videos are going to be in the description box. And this is an open collab. So if you, you know, feel moved, please participate. You don't have to be on YouTube. Just send us a picture of your, your palette. You know, we all have things that we don't want, shades that we don't want, I'm sure probably more than we'd like to admit. But yeah, if you do decide to participate, definitely let me know because I love uh, Build Your Own Palettes. I'm gonna be doing a lot more of that because I'm trying to have less palettes in my palette count. Currently, I'm at like 249 and, and, and going. We are still going, y'all. Now, the rules for this collab, basically, you just pick 10 shades for whatever the theme is. And I've picked 10 shades that I kind of don't want anymore. These shades though, some of them have been departed from palettes because I've been doing a lot of that lately. So let's go ahead and get into this <laughs> palette. I'm curious about the look. Wait till y'all see this palette. This is about to be a mess. Y'all, this palette, I just, I just cannot, I cannot. So <laughs> we're gonna go, is this 10 shades? Yeah, it is. Tyrone's back. Awesome, you wanna say hi to everyone? Oh, I wanna show y'all my um, my glass. Why do you look like Fire Marshal Bill? I'm done, I can't. Let me tell y'all something. You look like... Go ahead, what do I look like? Raven. Okay, that's not an insult. Raven looks strict. I can go ahead and finish. Can I finish, can I finish? Okay, I'm finished. The funny thing about this palette is that there are some repeat offenders <laughs> in this palette, y'all. Oh my gosh. All right, let's get started. Let me turn the exposure down and we can talk about why these might have to go. First here, we have the shade Tower of Terror by Copacetic Cosmetics. And my thing with this is it's a flaky shade. I'm not sure at what point I felt like this was okay to buy because I've never been a fan of flakies. There's no way that I wouldn't have known that that's what this was. And you know, I, I can't with the messiness. I can't with having to manipulate it. I mean, we might try that in this video. And if you like flakies, there is no judgment. It's just something I can't do at this time. I can't do the big particles. 
I can't do the flakes on my pants. It, it, it's just not practical. Let's do this by brand. Let's do that. Now next we have the shade Cookie Dough. Oh, guys, close my door. Like you gonna FaceTime somebody you know I'm recording. Like just coming in here trying to do stuff. Cookie Dough is by Copacetic Cosmetics as well. I will say this smells really good. It does. And there's a mint one too. I have the mint one as well. When I saw this, because they had um, some different shades, they had the little uh, sweet smells, and I don't, know, I don't know if they were after cookies or something. I, it doesn't matter. I don't think I just like looking at this. I, I don't think I want to look at it anymore. I'm tired. I'm tired of looking at it. So let's just see. I mean, it's not a bad shade. It's not, but. I don't know if I like the way it looks. So you're on the you're on the chopping block. All right, another one from Copacetic is the shade Pollen. I don't know, it looks kind of dusty. Hold on. I don't know why I put this on a chopping block. Let's see. So it's just a yellow uh, shimmer. It's nothing to write home about. It's more of a satin type shimmer. These mattes can be a bit tough to work with. They are pressed pigments. So you do have to work a little more with them. And if you don't want to do that, and it's not worthwhile to you, then I think these can be frustrating and the pan size is a lot. So this was Wink, and I, I just remember this one not being good. So let's just see, Periwinkle Blue. I do believe Give Me Glow has upgraded their matte formula. So not swatching bad or anything, but we'll have to try it out. I'm saving it. Now I love saving like my loose or, or single shimmers because I can put those in palettes that I wanna change shades in. But these mattes, I mean, they're just sitting here because I know I don't enjoy them. The last palette I tried, ooh, nope, that wasn't even giving me glow. Mom, it's about clarity, I get them confused. I'm not even new, um, the set of magnets because I can't find the other two. Why not? Because I don't know, I burned the, the big ones in, but right. I can't find the small one. Hmm. Let me ask you a question. Are you gonna be able to Put them not misplace? Because August really enjoys the magnets I use no. with my depot. What, you can't put them back? I say I can. Oh, okay. In the bag? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Cool. And I ordered an extra set by mistake because I do like this Amazon ordering in the middle of the night and apparently I didn't check my basket. So now I've got like eight telescopic magnets. Plus I found the one that I lost. So I have nine. All right, let's move on. Ooh, two brands make up the, the other offenders. Now let's talk about this shade right here. I have to put it in the description box just because it's in the other room, the box. This uh, is the purple shade from Nocturnal Nirvana by Pat McGrath. I depotted all, well, the three quads that came in that release in a minute. And then I put them back. I'm gonna put this back, but I don't wanna put it back because I, I just feel like this shade is dry. Do these have that same smell as that Tom Ford? I wonder if it's things that are baked. I'm almost positive. Okay, whatever shade this is, I just feel like it's doing too much of what I don't need. I, I, I mean, most likely since I put Nocturnal Nirvana back, I'm not gonna have the shade, like, or the palette without a shade. But it's just dry. That's what it looks like up close. I mean, it's a beautiful purple. Mom, I die. Okay. Excuse me. Please. No, how about that? Please. Those, yes. Thank you. I even, in a second, I even labeled them Iconic Illumination, Nocturnal Nirvana, and Ritualistic Rose with my new handy dandy label maker. Hold on, so I put these back. This, oh, I don't have the, sorry y'all. She didn't put the shades on the back. But the purple one, this one, dry. Okay, I don't even have anything I could substitute. I keep rubbing it. I, I, I gotta show them something real fast. Somebody said, you gotta rub off the top layer. I've put tape on it. So I'd like to see what this looks like on the eye. I mean, it doesn't look bad. I just, it's not bad. I'm gonna put it back, maybe. I'm gonna put it back, cause I'm not gonna have a shade out like that. This is ugly, y'all, I'm so sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Hold on, go ahead. They, okay. 
they are so tall and long. And, uh, and this one's a short. Can I show them the big ones? Mm -hmm. Let me talk to you about another repeat offender by Mama you Pat. This is from Celestial Nirvana. I, I that palette might get decluttered. And look how long the smaller one is. People will really like those. I'm gonna link that set in the description box because you can use those for other things besides eyeshadow palettes. Could I keep one? I'm sorry that I don't know this shade either. I have all my Pat McGrath palettes in the other room because I have to, that's where I film the declutters. But this is from the Mothership Mega. I cannot stand this shade in the palette. Like it's just not what I need. Oh, it's something peony. It's probably, I put V peony. It's probably Venetian peony or something. I'm sure it is. Peony. It's a type of flower. So it, it's just a matte pink. I mean, it's not a bad shadow, but in that palette, I think it's I bad. I don't like it at all. I don't even like that palette at all. I've tried to like it. I don't try to stop you the thing in the basement, but you're making from the floor. He is? Oh. I'm just kidding. Oh, he took it down there? Yeah. <gasps> Tyrone. Tone. He put my, um, I got a, I it's like, it's like in um I ordered this is horrible. I ordered an elliptical, but it's not really an elliptical. It's like um a combo elliptical stair stepper and treadmill cuz it's about to be on. Like I used to love me and my sister. Oh my gosh, the elliptical. That was like my thing. Like I have my Peloton, but it's cool, but I don't use it like my elliptical. That was my mm, like I'm not playing. I'm not playing at all and I'm trying to like do the intermittent fasting. But I just started like yesterday, so I'm not gonna make a whole big thing about it because it's like when you start talking about it and then you fall off, you feel bad. Like, no, I'm trying to do the intermittent fasting, I'm trying to do the Mediterranean lifestyle. I'm into it. I'm supposed to have red wine, but this is what I got right now. It's low, it's low carb. It's hard because when you're trying to like have a certain lifestyle, you have to build up the things that you have in your pantry. And groceries, y'all, oh my gosh. Like eggs, why are eggs like so much? It's like a dozen or a dozen and a half eggs are like $8. And then don't try to get like cage free because that's a wrap. Last three shades are from Thomas. This is a quad I bought called Photosynthesex. Uh, I think that quad is okay. It was, it might have been my first Tom Ford quad because I got it on sale from Saxaw Fifth. But mm, he had a little dual chrome. It's one of the common dual chromes. I said a little dual chrome, that's rude. But we're gonna go ahead and um, look at these shades. So this is the brown that was in there and you know his shades don't have names. I did wanna keep it because I think Tom Ford, you know, has a nice, eyeshadow formula but I think I like that wet dry formula a lot better and this is not it ew okay that oh uh, this one might have to go y'all I'm gonna show you everything up close now on the eyes you know we can't tell everything from a swatch the other one from that quad is this one here so you've got like this kind of golden that's kind of cool shimmer metallic can't even barely see it and then lastly is the duo chrome so the thing about this is i have this shade several times over in my eyeshadow collection but you know i wouldn't mind this could go in like i wonder will this fit like in my natasha denona um palettes because this one's not bad i can already tell you i'll probably get rid of like those other two but this one looks good so, so let's look at the whole palette mm. <sighs> yeah see this looks good i don't know if that needs to necessarily be on the chopping block but we've seen this shade several times over so you know the rest of these I don't know, that pink shade by Pat is just always grinding my gears. So we're gonna figure something out. 
So I feel the best way to do this video is one look on each eye because I, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to use them all, but I'll be able to use, you know, more if I do it that way. I'm gonna prime my eyes using the MAC Paint Pot in Soft Ochre and then we're gonna get into this. All right, you guys, so let's get into this first look. I'm gonna start with the shade Wink and we're gonna use the BK Beauty A503 brush. It's gonna be a transition shade, y'all. Oh my God. I do recognize that shades like this are probably not the easiest to formulate, but this was a patchy one. I remember saying that to myself when I used this shade the first time, which was years ago, and I had like way less experience, you know what I mean? I, I honestly thought like, oh, it's probably something that I'm doing or maybe I don't have good brushes, you know? And it, it like I said, it's okay, but mm, this is also probably not a shade I'm gonna use a whole lot anyway. I find sometimes with the pressed pigment mattes that it's better to just tap them in versus doing a whole lot of swiping. So yeah, that's kind of how I'm feeling about this. I don't think it looks bad at all, but you know, it's, it's not my favorite to put on. I'm so curious about the Pat McGrath shade. So I am gonna go into that one next. Let's just see what this is gonna do. I'm not sure mm, how a brush like this is gonna grab it. So let's just try it out. I'm probably gonna have to go for something denser. And honestly, if this shade goes on nicely, which it, it kind of is, I mean, I'm gonna probably keep this one regardless. I'll, I'll say that just because I don't wanna have my quad with an empty space and there's nothing else that I'm gonna be able to put in it that's gonna fit or anything like that. But I've had this and I just can't remember what the original formula felt like. I mean, I have another purple from her in my La Vie and Rose palette, which also feels a bit dry. I think purples are not the easiest to formulate and I've seen that over time but I don't, I'm sorry, I don't have like, cause look, when I swatch it, I mean, as deep as this purple is, you're not really getting the payoff. And there is no top layer to take off because between the brush and me swatching it with my finger, we, we've taken off that top layer. Now with all of that being said, I don't think this looks bad. And if this is how the purple was always supposed to be, okay. I mean, I, I'll say this, it's not gonna be easy for you to put too much on. I'm gonna go into the Tom Ford Duochrome with my finger and just tap this in. Now, as I was saying, this is beautiful. It's just not something I don't have. This is such a common, duochrome so I, I just have to think like is it worth even keeping it i mean it's not gonna take up a whole bunch of space it's not like it's a whole palette or anything so i don't think it would really hurt but when i have sydney gray's uh, tiny marvels the shade scarab i have a shade in my menagerie palette and i want to say the pat mcgrath moonlit seduction it wasn't this but no hers was better than this one there there this is just common and I may have it in some singles as well. But so far this look is not bad. Yeah, like I'm not mad at it at all. So I'm gonna take this BK Beauty 207 brush into this shade from Tom Ford. Put it under the lower lash line. I don't think this one's gonna be anything to write home about either. Can I get something to drink? Something to drink? Yes. Sure, can you, can you get it? Are you able? Okay, I guess you are. I guess you're able. So yeah, I think that looks fine. Actually, I think that brown looks really good. So for the inner corner highlight, I'm going to go into the Nebula shade from Pretties For Your Face and just stick it there. Didn't spray it or anything. And I think that looks cool. Like, you know, is this my favorite look? No. Do I have like not the greatest attitude toward these shades? Yes. 
because I just have so many that I, I really love. Like, I'm like, oh my gosh, if I use this blue, or if I use my Menagerie Duochrome, like it would have knocked this one out. But this one doesn't look bad. Like, I am I think I'll keep the Tom Ford one. I like that. I, the Wink Shade, kind of giving y'all my final thoughts. The Wink Shade, I think it's time for that one to go because I, I don't really wear blues. And then I've never come back to wear that one after I did the video, which was back in like 2020. So I think it's time and I think that shade for its service. So far, so so far, Wink is the one. Nebula looks okay. Let's do another look. I'm gonna go into this other Tom Ford shade with the Sydney Grace a Blender. And that's just gonna kind of be the transition here. I like this, like, actually I like this. Well, this might be a keeper. Yeah, you can. No, you may not eat all. Okay. Two. He's like, can I have barbecue wings? I'm like, sure. He's like, can I eat all? No, all. So this is a nice shade. This is a nice shade. It's satiny, not too crazy on the brow bone. Let's go into the Pat McGrath pink shade. That's this one. I just feel like I have to use it because I don't know what it is about this shade that I just cannot. It's not the quality or anything like that. I, it just doesn't fit in place with that palette at all. I might declutter it, y'all, because I keep getting upset when I think about it. Now, that doesn't look bad, actually. I had a really hard time with that palette. Just trying to figure out what things went together. I don't think it looks bad. Kind of just doing this on the outside, even though it's not deep, you know? Try something different. I already don't like it, though, so there's that. Uh, we're going to go into this uh, Tower of Terror shade. And what I do want to go ahead and do is use the Mayron Mixy Medium so we can see how we can get this. Um, I want to see how we can get this flaky shade down into more of a liquid to put in the middle. Kind of like Halo style. So I'm just trying to scrape it up without getting it like... Like, is this a meal? Like, what, what are we doing? Like, why is it chunky? So I have it on the back of my hand here and we're just gonna see what we can do. I mean, I don't always wanna do things like this. That's the, the issue that I'm having, but it is helping the shade out. I think people that like the flaky shades, you know, you, they know what they're getting into and the types of looks, but this, mm. okay. I, and these dry down, y'all. Flaky shades, to me, they just really dry down. And then I worry about like glitter particles and is it gonna get in my eye and all that kind of stuff. And I don't wanna worry about that because that's not helping me have an easeful life. It's just not. Like, this is making my life complicated. Then I gotta clean this stuff up, you know? So I don't know if you can see it, but like, it's almost like a pressed glitter in a way because it doesn't always spread out evenly. But I also think that's the point of flaky shades to give you like that texture that you're not gonna get from all uh, shades. So I'm not mad at that, but I'm mad that it's all of my eyelashes. It's just too much. I'm probably not even doing this right. And that's why I just can't. Chopping block, it's, it's gotta go. So there is the second look, but I do want to see if there are any shades that I, oh yeah, I have this like cookie dough shade that we can use for an inner corner highlight. And that's not bad either. The cookie dough shade isn't bad. It's just, uh, when am I using this? I don't know. So I'm just taking the brown satin again from Tom Ford and just putting it underneath. I know I probably could have combined these shades differently, but that's just kind of what I came up with. I, I didn't use the shade Pollen. I probably didn't need that and the Tom Ford, but the Tom Ford shade to me is better for how I used it, almost like transitional like, whereas this one's a little more yellow or gold. I have enough gold. So here's the, here are the looks. I'm gonna put on mascara and then I'm gonna let you know like 
are any of these definitely leaving I, I will say yes so I'll be right back all right you guys I'm back with the finished looks mm-hmm what's up so you lost one no but I didn't see I didn't see it in the room well, it's in here. I know it is. I'm sure it is. Did you take it out of the house? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, then you'll find it. I'm sure you will. All right. Let's, because now he done lost my magnets. Okay. Just put on mascara today. No liner or anything. So here's the bottom line for these looks. <gasps> the first one I think looks, looks cool. I'm not mad at this. This one, I cannot stand it. I cannot stand it. I do not like that pink shade and this video I'm so glad that we we did this because you know it, it was easy to be like let's do a Valentine's Day thing to get people ready but no this is important if you don't enjoy thank you August and this goes outside of makeup if you're not enjoying the experience that you're spending your money on what are we doing I'll say this by me trying a lot of brands at this point there's certain brands I know I like and there's certain brands I know uh, they're just so so and I'm I might enjoy the final look but I don't know if it's worth the time that it takes you know to put the makeup on I don't know sometimes I'm like I am being so analytical about makeup lately but I have to be because in these going on like past three years i would say since mid 2019 i have been buying makeup like it was all going out of business part of it has been just my enthusiasm and my excitement for finding a hobby and then starting a channel and having an outlet something that was just for me you know outside of being a teacher and taking care of kids and things like that. But this has gotten completely out of hand. And you know, these shades, none of them are like trash. You know what I mean? But like, I will not be purchasing, like deliberately purchasing single flaky eyeshadow shades. Yes, there may be some flakies in my uh, Notoriously Morbid palettes, like one, maybe two. But I'm not going to go out and get a single shadow like the ones that I have from Copacetic and from Pretties for Your Face. Like I purposely bought those. So flaky shades are going to be leaving my collection. I am not into them and I honestly don't feel like the Dora line really melted down the shade to make it like almost like a liquid. And I'm not interested in, in doing that or figuring it out. The Tom Ford shadows were okay, but it also lets you know that like luxury doesn't always mean better. And I I do feel like that for the Pat McGrath, uh, I was gonna say Nocturnal Nirvana. Well, yes, that purple shade in Nocturnal Nirvana I don't like that shade. I don't like that when I swatch it, it's not pigmented. I do like that when I put it on, you know, there was a lot of control there, but that was because nothing was coming on the brush. So I had all the control because there was nothing there. Whereas, you know, a more pigmented purple, you might be like, Ooh, I can only tap this in a little bit and I got to scale back this one. I'm digging in it to try to get the pigment. So it did show up like a nice little fade out or whatever, but I mean, I'm gonna put it back in the palette, but I cannot stand that shade in the palette. I can't stand that palette. I think the Tom Ford satiny shade here was nice. I, I don't know if it's like something that's really like special that I wanna keep around. I think I'll keep the dual chrome shade around cause I do like that one. Might keep the brown. It, it's a satiny type of shade that, I mean, you can do like, um, like a one and done type thing if that's what you're going for or two and done. I don't, I don't know. The copacetic shade that looks like the cookie. I think it was cute. Like at the beginning, just like the novelty of it, but I don't really like looking at it. So that's going. The pollen shade, I just have other shades like that in and out of palettes. And again, the nebula shade, 
I wouldn't necessarily consider this one a flaky. So I might let this one stick around because I think this one would do well with the made, I don't know. It's all over my pants. I think it's gonna go actually, I can't. I can't deal with shades like all over my pants. And like I said, they weren't really doing what I needed it to do with the mixing medium. Like my notoriously morbid shades, when I use them with the mixing medium, I don't have all this uh, crumbling and all, so no. And then Wink, ah, uh, no, not keeping it. So what are we getting rid of? One, two, three, four, five of the 10 shades. The crazy thing is when I already know it's something I don't like, I'm just like in a funk about putting it on. And then I feel like, but I need to wear it because I spent the money on it. I'm, I'm over that y'all. I'm just letting y'all know. I know that some people were shocked with the last declutter, especially me getting rid of like two notoriously morbid palettes and like some of my unearthly collection whether I pay for it, whether it's gifted, all of this is about feeling good. And also I have to like face my reality that I don't have room for all of this stuff. If even when my like beauty room, it's gonna be a beauty room slash gym, I feel like. And, and this room is small, okay? <laughs> the room that we're talking about. So it's, it's gonna be, you know, a, a tiny situation. Even when it's done, I'm not gonna have room for all of these palettes and all of this makeup. And maybe if I had a bigger house or a bigger room, maybe I wouldn't feel so inclined to trash things or donate things, get rid of them, because you have a place, a designated place but I'm realizing that I don't. I don't right now have a designated place for things, especially my makeup, and it's everywhere. Like, you see this one corner of the room, but like on the floor I have drawers that I'm sitting on the floor because they were like those uh, cardboard ones. They broke, so I can't put them back in the drawer, and they're lining the floor, y'all. Like, it's like hoarders, and everything doesn't have a spot. So I have to really start discarding so that I can create a spot for everything. And that when I do move to my beauty room, like the last thing I wanna do is move things down there that and take that effort and time to move things that ultimately are gonna be trashed. So I don't wanna just move junk. I want this to be just very purposeful. So I think us doing this um, chopping block singles collab was a great idea. I've really slowed down on purchasing singles because once I found out like about eyeshadow singles, I completely just lost my mind. I lost, lost it. I ordered my first set of Cleona stained glass singles for Black Friday 2020. I got them in February of 2021. I did not order any more stained glass shades until like right before the new year. I wanted to try some more, but I really like them. I did get a whole lot of their circle shadows because I feel like everyone is into the stained glass shadows that they don't realize how amazing the circle shadows are. And I was able to get some for like $3, you know, right before the year was up. Terra Moons, like I was ordering so many singles. That So again, that's where this whole series came from. But I, I just started ordering more singles because I, I had to take a break, you know? And I am looking for singles that are unique, you know, to, my collection, I really feel like recently, Terra Moons has had those unique shifts. And I think it's because their duochromes have more of a gray base, not a black base. Like I think Menagerie is great because theirs are deep. I think they have black bases and this is just a guess because you also have those duochromes that have more of a sheer type base and those aren't my favorite but like the black base and those gray based uh, duochromes like that Terra Moons has the grays. I, I oh my god and my order shipped out like uh, recently so I'm so excited. I really am. Anyway y'all I'm not going to hold y'all because I just feel myself rambling but I hope that these videos are helpful 
as far as like making your own palette and going into your collection because it is honestly becoming easier for me to say no to things like before when I started doing purchase or pass or even before that and I was just on Instagram literally there was every day something that I wanted. What I'm struggling with right now is almost a sense of withdrawal that I'm not getting packages in the mail all the time. And I have to be okay with that. I have to be like, you know what, Kara, if you need to package up something that, that you already have, because we can't get used to that, that lifestyle because then you're always going to feel compelled to buy something. And like when you buy something, it's like getting that temporary high of, of getting ready to have something new. And then sometimes it takes a long time. Sometimes it doesn't, but whenever I get it, like I'm happy, like for the moment, but then I was just seeing more things. So, you know, instead of me like turning off the new makeup releases and hiding from them, like I'm trying to face this head on, like, you know, I care you have this, like Vive is coming out with these liquid blushes. I'll talk about that this weekend. And it's like, Girl, that Laura Mercier blush you have is almost gone and I would probably replace that before I got any other liquid blushes because that one has a track record of like, oh my God, I love this one little blush I have that I didn't think anything of, you know? So it's really helping me and I, I feel as though I'm getting stronger with being like, no. And the I got my Pat McGrath stuff sitting out there, like I said, and I'm kind of like, you know what? No, I'm taking all brands off the pedestal, like all of them, the singles, the indie, the mainstream, the luxury, all of it's coming and anything is subject to go at any time. That's why five of these shades are going. And my eyeshadow singles aren't really a problem like the palettes because they're easily stored, but I am still logging my singles. I do need to do an update because I don't log them the way I log my palettes, like not as often. So I'm happy, I'm happy where my journey is going. I'm happy with how I'm changing. And I really do hope that this is speaking to somebody out there. I know y'all didn't ask for this, but that's the whole makeup therapy piece. And I, I just wanted to share that I am feeling really good. Things are kind of messy in here, but sometimes things look a little worse before they get better. And I think that when I do finally sit down after all this and put my palettes away. I'm going to be really happy with them. When I do categorize all my singles, I'm going to be really happy with them and I'm going to have a spot for all of them. And if they don't deserve a spot, they got to go. And that doesn't mean that they're not good. It just means that maybe these will be good for someone else because they've served their time in my collection and I'm thankful for them all. So thank you so much for taking out some of your time and hanging out with me for another BYOP video. Please check out Kelly from Keep Beauty Real. Please check out Kendra Morgan over at Kendra Morgan Official. Please check out Lock Maiden. We would love to see your palettes and hear your input because this is, you know, again, an expensive hobby, but I think it's a way that a lot of us express ourselves and a lot of us have really come together as a very strong community. So I hope this was therapy for you. It always is for me. And until I see you again, make sure you're being gentle with yourself. Talk to yourself nice and stay safe. And I will see y'all in the next one. Bye. Hey, you guys, I totally forgot. I don't know what next month's theme is. Actually, let me just check and see if anybody uh, messaged me because, oh, we didn't. We sure didn't. Hmm. What a predicament. Okay. Once I figured that out, it'll be on the community page, y'all. All right. Bye. Oh, block your ears.